Good evening. Um, so one of the things about learning to tell stories, which a lot of people it seems like have done, is that you start to pay attention to the way other people tell stories, and sometimes you get a little critical. Right, so I just read a really good book, which I liked overall, called The Weight of Ink. I don't know if anybody's read it. If anybody wants to explain to me what it was about later on, I'd love to hear it. So, um, and he, it, it, is, it tells the story, twin stories of some historians and a, and a Jewess, and that's the word they use, who's in you know, the 1650s in London. And in order to put us in the place of the story, of course, they have to explain to us what it was like to be a Jew in London between the Inquisition and the plague. And it, it totally sucked, just to summarize. Um, and to do that, one of the historians uses this kind of device where he, sa he sends an email to his girlfriend and says, let me explain this to you. And I thought, oh, you know, it was otherwise a good book, but I thought that was kind of transparent what he was doing, right? So one of my favorite devices for taking us back and trying to explain things is J.K. Rowling, because I love Harry Potter. And in Harry Potter, when Dumbledore has to explain something to us, right, he takes a memory out of his mind, and he puts it in a device, a magical device, which I don't have, but called a pensive, and then you all get to kind of immerse yourself in the memory. And I thought that was actually a reasonably realistic way, because there are some memories from my childhood, especially, that do abruptly begin, abruptly end, and put me in the place. So I thought I would share one of those with you this evening. I'm in a quiet, echoey, vast space. It's dimly lit, almost like this. And I can't clearly see the walls around me, but at my feet, it's concrete. So I know I'm in a man-made space. My hand looks small in the hand that it's in. And I have to look up sharply to see the face of my father, whose hand I'm in. And so I must be about five or six. There aren't a lot of other people around. On my other side is my one year younger brother and he's holding my mom's hand and the baby's on my mom's hip. It's a vast space, we're not running around. So definitely there's some anxiety in this place. As we're standing, still not running around, dim light comes from the left. Oh, train tracks. Train noise follows. Ah, we're in a subway station. So I'm not a city person. My family's not a city people. But I had an aunt that lived in New York City. So that must have been where we were. We're listening to the train. It's far away, but it's coming fast. You can tell the noise is getting louder very quickly. And while we're standing there, there's a noise behind us. It's a clattering sound, <clears throat> someone struggling. And we all turn. Behind us is the turnstile. And there's a lone woman in sunglasses, in the dark, trying to get through the turnstile. And she's struggling. Her bag's caught. You can see the look on her face. A thin white cane comes over the turnstile. Ah, she's blind. Her ear is inclined in the direction that we are looking with our eyes. And the, lower, the train's getting louder. And it's getting much louder now because the brakes start squealing and that noise is just awful. And her face, she might miss the train. She's stuck on the turnstile. She's pretty far away. The noise is getting so loud now, I put my hand up because I want to take my hand out of my dad's hand so I can cover my ears because it's so loud. And as I look up to him to see if I can let go of his hand, I see that he and my mother they're not speaking, but they're having a conversation. They've been married long enough. They're having a conversation with their eyes. And I'm watching them, and there's a decision. My dad takes my hand, and he puts it in my brother's hand. And my mother juts her chin in the direction of the woman by the turnstile. She's now just about got her way through. The train is coming even faster. We can hear it. It's almost behind us, but we are all turned around now watching the woman. She's just gotten through the turnstile, but it's like 50 yards to the train, and, and I know it's right behind me even though I can't see it. And my father starts to walk towards her swiftly enough to make it, not so swiftly that he is threatening. He stops, and she stops right in front of him, I can't hear anything. I don't know if he speaks, but he puts out his arm. 
The look on her face was clearly relief. She grabs his arm, and my brother hand tugs me towards the train. The memory ends. What was I thinking? See, you thought I was going to forget the theme. What was I thinking? I don't know what I was thinking, but I really hope that at some point in my children's lives, they've thought the same thing about me. <laughs>